Coming up on this edition of April Good On Air, we look back at Senator Bill Doyle's life. Bill Doyle, Senator Bill Doyle passed away at the age of 98 on August 15th, but we look back on his life and times, and even here on Able Den On Air. All that and much more when Able Den On Air starts right now. Welcome to this edition of Able Den On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of all people with all abilities despite their challenge and disability. Um, it is with great sadness that Senator, longtime Senator Bill Doyle has passed away at the age of 98. Uh, and we here at Orca Media um, send our condolences, and we here at Abled and On Air send our condolences to the family during this time. What you're about to see in the next half an hour is clip, our clips of Senator Bill Doyle, um, of myself, Lawrence Seiler, being interviewed by him, as well as clips of Abel on Air when he was on our show. Let's take a look at those clips. Bill Doyle on, on Vermont issues, and, and Sophie Kirsten, who's my partner, and uh, and their guest is uh, Lawrence Seiler. And uh, you want to take the first question? Sure. Thank you, Lawrence, for joining no us today. No problem. Yes, ma'am. Um, we know that you work for, you advocate for people with disabilities in people the state of Vermont. People with special needs, yes. And so we're just gonna put that out there first, but yeah. I wanna know what brought you to Vermont in the first place. Well, what brought me to, what brought my wife and I to Vermont was uh, some services, you know, appropriate housing. You know, because um, contrary to public belief, there's a lot of people that fall through the cracks uh, when they're challenged. Um, some people have what we call one foot in, one foot out. When we both were in New York, uh, we weren't getting very many services. Um, it's not that we need a lot, but appropriate housing was one of them. Um, and some, you know, where we live in Montpelier, um, there's doctors across the street. Who, who doesn't want to live where your doctor's office is right across the street? Right. So, you don't have to travel so much. So those are the main reasons why we moved to Vermont. And um, did you find that you really were having trouble getting those services in New York? Well, in New York, um, a lot of people didn't see us as disabled, and they still don't. A lot of state organizations don't see us as challenged. I was born with just cerebral palsy and some other challenges, but they, you know, they see people, well, if you're on television, because back in New York I was on TV as well, you know, you're on TV, you're advocate, you're, you're doing things, we, you know, you don't need our help. Uh. So that's basically what, but then years ago, back in 1998, while I was going uh, to, um, Lehman College, I have my uh, degree in um, journalism there. Um, I saw a way to start advocating by creating a television program, and that's what I did, and been doing it here in Vermont for about five years, and been doing good ever since. That's so wonderful. Yeah. Well, say where you, you first grew, where did you grow up? Oh, I grew up, um, well, the Bronx is not burning anymore, but I grew up in Corp City section of the Bronx, um, 1973, but at that time, because um, I was on your show before, uh, um, back in 2016, but um, just to, uh, just to uh, reiterate some things, uh, back in the 70s, there weren't very many services for people with disabilities. 
uh, you either were going to Special Olympics or some other thing, or you were institutionalized. Mm -hmm. Because now he, here's the thing. Back in the 70s in New York, there was a place called Willowbrook State School, which um, Geraldo Rivera reported on with ABC News. But um, through some of the organizations that I've interviewed on Able and on Air um, that we do here in Vermont, th I found out that there are still 39 states institutionalizing people with disabilities. So that That's just so sickening to hear. Um, you would think that there wouldn't be that many. Um, back in the 70s, they also had something called uh, workshops, not not classes, but uh, a workshop would be a place where a person with a disability would go, a person with special needs would go, and they would do peace work and get paid a small salary just to keep busy. Yeah. But they stopped in Vermont, they stopped those workshops, those peace workshops, and because and, um, I know here in Vermont there was something called the Brandon State School. Mm. and um, some other places that got shut down, but there is, we still have a lot to learn despite everything. I mean, why is there still 39 states? Yeah. It shouldn't be. Right. There just, should a, just a follow-up on the Bronx. Uh, tell us how the Bronx differs from other parts of New York City. Yeah. Well, back in the 70s, they had something called, because um, I was watching old footage the other day, as a matter of fact, on YouTube, about the old Bronx, um, there was a place called Fort Apache, um, which was a police precinct, but they used to have a thing where the Bronx is burning, you know, the burning Bronx, mm -hmm. and you would see all these buildings falling down because of um, lack of infrastructure. But, um, you know, um, the South Bronx now, it's up and coming. Um, they have the Hunts Point food, mar uh, food market there. So there's a, um, more people are living now in the Bronx. I mean, okay, um, you still have a lot of shootings and bad things happen, but they're, they're making the Bronx as beautiful. I mean, we have the, they have the New York Yankees. Right. Um, Yankee Stadium changed um, in the Bronx. They made it more accessible. I mean, the only thing that's not accessible at Yankee Stadium is the food. Family of four, you're going to pay about $500 by the time you finish. <laughs> so, but that's about the only thing. Um, but they've changed quite a bit. Um, uh, and Vermont is changing quite a bit with um, transportation. Uh, there's going to be more, there's going to be um, what we call paratransit for people with disabilities. Matter of fact, I'm working with an organization now um, called the Vermont Regional Planning Commission. That's the correct name. They're here in Montpelier, uh, and um, they were on Able to On Air recently. Dan Curry is the executive director of that. Org uh, well, he he's the um, um, sorry, he's not the executive director. He's the um, He's one of the planners of the organization, um, and right now I'm currently working with that organization um, outside of the show. I'm doing public service announcements for, um, I'm working with them to do public service announcements to get the message out that um, we need more, more transportation for people with disabilities. I mean, what if you live in, here in Vermont in a rural area, and not Montpelier, not Stowe, um, and you live all the, uh, it's called the boondocks, you know? You, <laughs> you live somewhere, you live in the sticks, and you have nowhere to get to a hospital, nowhere to get to a, a supermarket, so you need transportation. So that's what Vermont is uh, doing now. They're through GMTA, they're, they're um, working to um, change that situation. Yeah, getting back to the Bronx, what, is, what are some of the other political divisions? In what was that? 
uh, Bronx is the part. Oh, you the like the Bronx. Bronx. Okay. <laughs> and not from no, Bronx. Let's talk about other, the other, Bronx. other parts. Other parts of New York City. Um, okay. Um, well, the Bronx has the Bronx Zoo. You know, beautiful um, situation there. Uh, one of the best in the world. Huh? Yeah, one, of the, one of the biggest in the world. Although I've been to Israel and they have a zoo. Um, Vermont, I'm wondering, Vermont doesn't have a zoo, does it? No. I don't think people are particularly interested after they get done feeding their <laughs> five llamas, their 200 <laughs> goats, and their 90 chickens. And a, partridge in a, with it. <laughs> and a partridge in a pear tree. Something but, like that. Mm, um, but yeah, I, I feel in Vermont, though, we do need more um, things to do in certain areas. Like, um, there is no amusement parks, but we definitely have beautiful parks. One of my favorite parks here in Vermont happened to be, happens to be Groton. Uh, Groton. Groton, sorry. Groton State Park. I've, I've been kayaking there. I've been canoeing. Um, How did you get there? Oh, um, I have, my, my wife and I, uh, through, I get certain services, um, through the Vermont, um, is an organization for the blind and visually impaired. They took us on a picnic and um, we uh, went canoeing. I, had, I have the connections through, um, f through Adaptive Sports Vermont, which is a wonderful organization. Oh, yeah. Adaptive, Adaptive Sports. They haven't been on my program yet, uh, but Adaptive Sports, um, you do mountain climbing, you do canoeing and all that other kind of nice stuff, but they train you how to use the equipment. So you can So you're not actually mountain. climbing the mountain yet. They're actually showing you how to put on the harness and um, you know, they're showing you how to canoe, they're showing you how to how to hold the paddle, um, so how to put on a life jacket, that type of thing. Are they gonna work in tandem, you think, with the Para program the um, well, transportation. They'll, they'll probably know about it. A lot of organizations along the the route, depending on the routes, um, will be finding out. Um, you know, like I said, a lot of these people, a lot of people live in rural Vermont and can't get to uh, somewhere. But with GMTA, you can call them a day before, right? Twenty-four yeah. hours ahead. And Pretty say, much. I need to get from, how did you call it, the from sticks out in the sticks? Out in the sticks. Out in the brambles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm here, buried under the bramble on talking Mountain about, Nine. Talking about, um, talking about. And they'll come get you. Pretty much. But talking about transportation um, in Vermont, the only thing that really needs to change, especially with GMTA, is the, um, I have visual impairment. So, the brochures that are put out are sometimes in small print. <clears throat> now you can request larger oh. print. Yep. Okay. A lot of, but a lot of organizations don't really want to pay so much money because it costs a lot of money. Yeah, but to I put mean, things in pr in larger print. If they're dealing with visually impaired people, you would think it would be logical, right? So it's I all mean, about. Money. So, how does your show educate people in Vermont? Well, just to let you guys know, um, starting in 2019, uh, we will be uh, able then on air will be funded by uh, Green Mountain Support Services, which is a wonderful organization. Uh, Joshua Smith runs that organization. But how our show um, educates people in Vermont. We have um, lots of guests, like you guys do, and we basically uh, educate people by um, showing what Vermont has to offer through those organizations. Because a lot of people with special needs don't know what's available to them as far as services are yeah, concerned. Yeah, I think that's um, huge. Just, yeah, if you don't know what services are available to you, it's like, for example, um, a lot of immigrants who come to this country, 
sometimes are just dropped off and they don't know where to turn to go somewhere, right? The, the biggest thing is getting lost in the shuffle. So we kind of make it easier for a person with a disability. We, we use our show as an educational tool. Um, so if, if people want to learn about autism or they want to learn about cerebral palsy or they want to learn about some other organization, they turn to the show for that. Uh, just to let you know, another extension, we recently, we have a couple of episodes online, uh, we recently uh, started a new program called Able to Cook, which is a 30-minute program that focuses on cooking and recipes and, uh, you know, people with special needs to learn how to cook for those that are scared of the kitchen. We recently, this past, this year, 2018, interviewed someone from Washington County who was so afraid of the kitchen that um, now, despite her anxiety, she's cooking and, and catering events. So, uh, wow. yeah. So uh, we're going to be expanding by doing more cooking shows and more shows and getting the word out there. Uh, we now are um, airing in, in Brattleboro. We're airing in Burlington. We're airing all over different access centers um, and it's important to get the word out there. Uh, we're also, um, outside of the show, I'm creating a news portal, like a newspaper for people with disabilities and their families and there'll be links to the show through there as well. And what you do is truly remarkable and, and uh, you've done a great job describing what you do. Okay. but. Uh, just getting went back to the Bronx just a little bit mm -hmm. for the, uh, the home of the New York Yankees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the Yankees. The, were they ever called the Bronx Bombers? Yeah, they're called the Bronx Bombers. The Bronx, um, growing up Jewish, the, the Bronx had places such as Jan's Ice Cream Parlor, which is no longer there. Um, I don't have the ingredients today, and maybe one day I'll come back on the show and make some. Um, there's a old, um, I'm sure you've heard of an, uh, what we call an egg cream, which oh. doesn't contain eggs at all. It used to. It started out containing an egg, milk, and so on, but they took the eggs out years ago because of salmonella. Hmm. Um, unless you're Rocky Balboa and drinking eggs, you know, it's not a good thing. But an egg cream is basically um, uh, seltzer, chocolate syrup, or vanilla syrup, and you just mix it up and you call it an egg cream. No ice cream? And if you want ice cream, then it's an ice cream soda. Oh, okay, so an egg cream is an just... An egg cream is just... Seltzer and chocolate. Seltzer, the chocolate syrup, which is, which is you bet, it's... Well, it's chocolate syrup. It's called from a company called You Bet Chocolate Syrup. Um, or you can use Hershey's, but um, that's all it is. Well, what you do is truly remarkable, and, and, and we congratulate you on the work you are. Just yeah, April Denonair is extremely important. Um, I'll give it a website. Yeah. Um, it can be seen at www.orcamedia.net. Um, um, I'm also on Twitter and Facebook, um, but, um, you know, the show is vitally important to the special needs community and needs to continue well, and will continue. And, and, and for good reason. Mm -hmm. Just getting back a little bit to the, the, the Bronx Bombers and the Yankees, uh, are you a Yankee, Yankee fan? Unfortunately, I don't want to say Boston on this show, but I'm a Boston fan. Um, you know, I've been to, I've been to the stadium, uh, Boston Red Sox, beautiful stadium out there. You know, but um, yeah, Babe Ruth started with Boston before he became um, Bronx Bomber. Uh, yeah, I, I love the Bronx Bombers as well. The only thing I don't like, uh, it costs too much to go to Yankee Stadium. Um, 
they just need well, to. What, what price are we talking about? Hmm? What are the fees? What would you pay to get? Oh, um, in case we want to go over the family of four is going to at least cost you about five hundred dollars. By the time you get a hotel room to go and, and, and hot dogs and everything else, parking. Um, the Mountaineers is a beautiful team, but we need to have. I think Vermont needs a professional baseball uh, club here. If Vermont had a professional baseball club here, we would be good to go. I'll take that back to the team that I'm, I associate with. So what makes the Yankees very special and, and take, take up on, on why the Yankees are singled out as being quite special? Um, the reason um, the reason why, well, it, because it brings people that have never, okay, um, how can I say it? Sometimes people have never gone to a baseball game. So it, Yankee Stadium is such where they offer everything for everybody. They offer accessible seating, accessible parking, um, you're, you're right there by, um, you're, uh, you're right there by public transportation. Um, the trains, the buses, people live there. Um, but, you know, it's just a, a special place. It, it, but it just costs extremely too much to go these days. Well, that's great. How many games would you go to a year? Well, I remember growing up, um, it didn't cost that much. Uh, my, my father, many recipes, took me to both Yankee Stadium and, uh, and the Mets. Um, but we would get the cheap seats, one of those things where you have to walk. I've, oh. been, I've been there and I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so the, uh, the Yankees are, have, have that why, why are the Yankees so special and what and what some, some they some have the their own some, network who are some of the players that, that um, well one of my favorite players on the Yankees happens to be Jorge Posada um, Jorge Posada's family has um, an outfielder they, huh outfielder well no, Jorge yeah he's an outfielder but Jorge Posada has a, a um, a family member who has an autistic son, and his foundation helps um, a lot of the um, Yankee players <clears throat> set up foundations for, uh, to help people with um, autism. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, the whole, you know, there's like so many baseball players of the past. Thurman Munson, his wife set up um, a foundation to help sick kids. Um, Johnny Bench and those, but Yan uh, the Yankees have, um, I forget his name, I have to look it up, but there's a player, you probably know it more than I do, there's a player that used to play for the Yankees, and he, um, he had one arm, do you know what I'm talking about? No. Last name was Albert, I think, but. I do remember, uh, not one arm player, but I didn't know the name. Yeah, but. You know, the ball club um, has, has things special about it because uh, the Yankees do help um, people with disabilities and their families and uh, other, you know, children's hospitals and so on and so forth. One other final Yankee question, how are they doing? And uh they're, they're, um, they're doing quite well, um, but uh, since I moved on this side of the tracks, I'm a Boston fan. So I hope you're not upset. <laughs> or she's swayed us all. I'm huh? very impressed that their interest in special needs, as you have pointed out. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I have, um, I, no, I deal with cerebral palsy. I, uh, let me just let you know this. Um, through the show that I've done for the past five years that my wife and I have done, um, we educate our audience and tell them that you know, people deal with challenges. We don't suffer from it. Many often times, as a matter of fact, I had to um, put a journalist, uh, which I can't mention 
paper he worked for, but um, I put a journalist in his place uh, most recently, and um, because the journalist said, oh, people suffer from disability. No, we do not suffer from it. Yes. You, uh, cannot di you cannot die from cerebral palsy. You, you're challenged with it. There are certain days where, yeah, there are certain days where I have my aches and pains, but I just deal with it and, and move on. Did you go to school in New York City? Yes, uh, I went um, high school. I went to Christopher Columbus High School. Do these schools do have different assignments? Do you have several, many, many schools? Explain what yeah. those different um, schools do. Well, now the Board of Education years ago split up into what we call the Department of Ed. Um, a lot of these schools, the only school that I know of, um, well, because my wife went to Edward R. Murrow High School. That's the only, st uh, in Brooklyn, that's the only a school. A great reporter. Yeah, great reporter. That is the only school that I know of that still is the same, and they haven't split up into charter schools. I think it was the dealing with money situations and just changing of hands, changing of management. But um, I went to Christopher Columbus High School, then I went to LaGuardia Community College, and then Lehman College for my um, bachelor's in uh, journalism. So if you live in New York City, the, uh, New Yorker have a choice of many schools to go mm -hmm. to. Uh, City reasons. University of New York has about 35. Um, I've also worked for colleges. Um, I've mentored students through the, um, in terms of my media background, a lot of my students that was on my show uh, when I was in the Bronx, uh, I worked for an organization called the um, John F. Kennedy Jr. Found, uh, was it? John F. Kennedy Jr. Research Foundation through the City University of New York. That was a mouthful. Mm -hmm. um, your, turn, your turn, Sophie. Oh, well, he's still talking. Go ahead. And I worked for the CUNY Research Foundation. Um, you know, and the, the CUNY Research Foundation was a longtime supporter of the uh, show I did. The show I did in New York was called, uh, in, in the Bronx, was called um, Special People, Special Issues. And basically, same thing as Able to on Air, but now it's a different name. Um, and my students would come to me on an after-school basis through, through the, um, there's a district called District 75, District 75 of the Department of Ed, uh, when it was a lot of students that were in special education, but they would come to me to learn. It would be like an after-school job. So I would, um, I would bring them on shoots with me. I would uh, show them graphics. Um, they would be floor managers. They would um, co-host the show with me on a daily basis. On a daily basis. So, but they would get paid through the school to work with me. So, you know, and I would um, be mentoring them. It sounds like a wonderful program. Did you, have you started to organize something like that around I'm here? I'm going to be it sounds doing wonderful. that where I'm going to be going to all the schools, um, starting with, uh, I, I, I want to start at Spalding High School and work up, or possibly, uh, <coughs> Possibly the middle schools, but I, I, ha I have to investigate how to go about doing that and getting funding for that, um, you know. It seems like you have a wonderful intention for the, the broader community that is really needed. And Broadcasting is, is one of those things really where you can time. take a, a, a camera. At, oh, Don't worry about the time. Um, you can take a camera and teach. If you can teach somebody what you've been taught, that's the advice I can give you. Um, pass it along, or as I say, um, passing it forward. Yeah. Why, why would a parent have different choices to, uh, for their child in, because of many different schools in New York City? Well, when I went to school, there were, uh, you had to go to your zone school, but, um, that time I was going. You don't have to. We, we're okay. Oh, it's okay. I'm sorry. At that time I was going to um, a junior high school, um, Pablo Casals, 
and they told my parents, the school told my parents, oh, he has to go to his own school. My parents said no. Um, unfortunately, back when I grew up, there was uh, still a lot of animosity with prejudice. Mm -hmm. So my father fought not to bring me to Tru Truman High School because I would have been the only uh, Caucasian person there, right? And it would have been, because Truman at that time had fighting going on in the schools. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of gangs going on at that time. And uh, they um, said, nope, you're gonna go to Columbus. And I was like, okay. But, but my point being is that with all this prejudice stuff that's still going on, why can't we all just get along? Like recently, we had that huge synagogue shooting in Pittsburgh, um, which you guys probably heard about. We should just all get together, have more shows like the show that you do, the show that I do, and invite people to, to talk about, if we talked more about what's going on in the world and how to fix it, because not everything can be fixed with a Band-Aid. It's like years ago you had programs like the Brady Bunch and so many others. You can't fix family problems in a half an hour, but programs like ours, yours and mine, educate. So if we have more educational programming on television, like Mr. Rogers, who passed away, um, and they have documentaries about him, and so many others, you would learn more instead of picking up a gun and just shooting people. I mean, that, that thing in Pittsburgh was ridiculous. Yeah. Now, in a community like you're trying to support, I feel like you guys need a clubhouse. And it's probably the same for everyone. The boys have their clubhouse. The girls have their clubhouse. The folks with cerebral palsy have their pl their clubhouse. And wait a minute, we shouldn't segregate. No, no. I'm just saying, like you guys can have, you know, a legitimate baseball game where everybody's on the same page, and it's not like you know, this mm. person's going above or beyond or below the line or. And anybody can be incorporated, and anybody can play, and anybody can be part of the team. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know. I'm just really grateful you're doing the work you are. And thank you again for having me on the show. Well, one final question. How do New Yorkers feel about John F. Kennedy? Oh, well, John F. Kennedy's family, um, now that you mentioned, um, Eunice Kennedy Shriver started the Special Olympics. John F. Kennedy, back in 1963, signed an act to, before he died, uh, uh, to um, get more services for people with mental and physical challenges. Um, I went to a place called the uh, uh, Rose F. Kennedy Center. As you know, Rose, Rose Kennedy had mm -hmm. a challenge. Uh, she had uh, challenges. But the Rose F. Kennedy Center, gave me my physical therapy. As a matter of mm -hmm. fact, I'm now going back to adult physical therapy, which, uh, you know, at any age, if you need it, it's there. And it's uh, good. And it's good. Uh, physical therapy, exercising. I've Since I've been in Vermont over the last five years, I've lost a total of 100 pounds. Yeah. So... We, we live in a place, we live in a place where there's organic food. We live in a place where you, um, <laughs> where it, there's not so much greasy food too much, with the exception of certain places. But you can, uh, there's farmer's markets, there's all kinds of places to go. Um, although I feel that the co-op needs to, bring their prices down just a little bit. Um, this is my opinion, free speech TV. <laughs> Sophie, you want um, some questions from Sophie? But well, it's we like live in Vermont, we yeah. can pick and choose. 
Yeah. Well, I just think that the your observations, having been here for five years, you're picking up on some really important And qualities. we still need to change. We still sure. need to change. But We're not perfect. There is support in certain places. It's not like you can, it's not like and a, a, a perfect, and a, um, People with special needs shouldn't be treated as labels. Mm -hmm. One thing I'm going to mention is yeah, yeah, vitally yeah. important. When I first got to Vermont, and this is the last thing, I had to go to a hospital in Vermont just to get my medication regulated and stay there a, a day or so because uh, you know I also deal with epilepsy. Mm -hmm. So I had to get that checked out. In the forms that I was filling out where it says diagnosis, they still had the word mental retardation. Now, a lot of states are changing that and have changed that because you're not supposed to put those words on medical forms anymore. Hmm. Uh, back when in did the, that happen? Back in New York, back in the 70s, they, they, uh, when all this thing was going on, when, when all these institutions started leaving, um, because you can't just diagnose somebody mentally retarded. They don't use, they use challenge, they use other words. They got the word handicap out of, you know, medical jargon. So basically, uh, with all these changes, words are f for, uh, or labels are for medication bottles, not people. And so special ed, is that still considered a not very polite term, or what is that? Um, How is that? Well, special, ed, special education is a service. Okay. But they don't, they don't use the word handicap anymore, and they don't use certain words anymore because, um, well, uh, words hurt. But um, unless you're a doctor, because it has to go, it's going according to HIPAA, unless you're a doctor, you can't just diagnose somebody without getting to know them. Right. So that's why they change those words and, and you know, and, um, you know. So well, before we the mm -hmm. program end here, are there some special things you'd like to see happen with regard to I would lives? like, um, I would like to see, uh, well, just to let you know the future goals of, the, of our shows, we're going to do more of them and keep that going and um, get more funding um, as we go on. But what I would like to see uh, Vermonters do um, is have, um, you know, people with special needs should um, have more employment and we should have a living wage. Um, so we don't, because I, I recently, um, this past year, taped the State House the, the Poor People's Campaign, mm. which was started by um, Martin Luther King Jr. Um, if we had more of a living wage, then there wouldn't be a Poor People's Campaign. So I would like to see certain states, especially Vermont, that people with special needs are treated like everybody else, given a living wage, m more housing, and so on and so forth, so we wouldn't have to go backwards and be quote unquote, stigmatized as always being poor, always being this, always being that. Right. Well, so Sophie and I are grateful for the work that you do. Do you have any Very. closing comments you'd like to make? Well, just that, like, I'm ready to see the baseball team. Yes, <laughs> the Yankees. <laughs> no, your team, and I'm, you know, it's just, it's really, um, it's heartwarming to hear that there is an advocate for people who are sort of unintentionally but sidelined and um, we don't I'm very grateful for that we don't need to be sidelined but no. a lot of people need more people need to speak up for themselves and start advocating for more services yeah. Yeah. to mention so Sophie has her own uh, baseball team that she cares about ah, <laughs> Bill's my outfielder <laughs> put me in coach <laughs> okay <laughs> All right, um, so well, thank you so much, Lawrence, for joining us, and very best of luck thank you. to you nice and job. your thank sweetheart you, on luck these to you. projects. Yes, and, and we'll keep you know keep an eye on you. And thank you for having me on. Um, on on it's your our show. pleasure. Of course, we're, we're, thank we're, you. We are fortunate to have you. Okay.
Um, again, we uh, we send condolences to um, to the family of Senator Bill Doyle. He will be missed. Uh, he was a long time senator in uh, in Vermont, and. All the work that he did, including those surveys that he sent uh, to make sure people um, voted, and he was big on uh, people with special needs uh, and um, you know working towards helping people with special needs become more independent. Um, thank you, Senator Bill Doyle, for all the work you did for the state of Vermont. We will never forget you. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time.